let, let's see if we if we can do it easy. Um, the basic reason why we do this thing, uh, why we do this course, where we do science at the end, is because we want to understand the the universe, no? understand what is happening in the world, in the nature, to understand in general. And uh, we start with data. Like everybody knows that when you do science, you you get a lot of data. So, what we do with this data? What 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 can we do with this? Okay, I see a lot of people coming. This is what we did essentially in last class, and we are going to be doing in in, in this in these classes. Um, we uh, get some data. Um, we we read it in our computer, and we read it. Uh, that is what we did last class. No, uh, we are using the new system uh, that. Uh, it's uh, producing better data frames, uh, something called table. That uh, one of the advantages is that when you print them, they don't overwhelm you with all the numbers and give you kind of the basic idea. You you get a, a little sample of things. Okay, someone arrived late. Uh, they had to fill the survey. Um, let's make people who arrive late solve their own problem for arriving late. So. Uh, you recognize this, no? Uh, do you agree here? This is clear for everybody what we are doing here? Yes. Good, good. Everybody move with the head. Fine, fine. If you don't have a camera, you have to speak. So we can also take a vector. And we did this, that was the exercise last time. We essentially have a function that asks if the value is not available, then the exclamation point means the contrary of that, uh, when it is not not available, when the value is a real number and not uh, NA, then we take the the corresponding value. So we, we use this logical index. We use this logical question as an index. This will be true when the value is a number and false when it is an NA, and therefore we got the numbers that are good numbers. Okay. Why I'm doing this? Because uh, for today's class, it will be easy to explain. Okay, so this is what we do, did before. Uh, I, I, I don't want to make the explanation harder using NA values, but uh, in other cases, we may keep them. Okay, so question. Everybody understand what is happening here? No? We, we get a vector and we, we uh, use a uh, vector in a logical question. That logical question is an index of the same vector. And we get a smaller vector with the weight in kilogram from people from this course and previous courses. Okay. And the values make sense, they are in a good range. So now the question is so what? Uh, if I give you this number, what do you learn with this number? Why do we care about number? This is kind of the philosophical part of the of the course. Uh, you did an experiment. We did an experiment with the the, the survey is an experiment. Uh, it's a way to take data from nature. So, if this is the result, so what? Uh, what do you learn? Um, why should we care? Um, so, that essentially the the answer to that question is that we need to do something with this number that is useful for people. I mean, look look at this, look at this. Uh, uh, you have these values. Uh, these values uh, are good numbers and they correspond to, to real people. Some of these numbers are you, uh, they are kind of personal. What do we learn from this? What What is the meaning of this? Uh, that, you can even say that. What is the meaning of these numbers? But to, to understand that, essentially, we need to uh, tell something about this. Uh, we, we, we need to tell a story. Numbers by itself are meaningless. The meaning of numbers, of, of any experimental result, are the stories that you tell about the numbers. You have to tell something. You have to create 
some story. Now, there are uh, simple stories and advanced story. We are going to start with the simple stories. Um, for example, the basic story that you can say is try to make a summary of these values, you say a few numbers. For example, what are the typical questions that people will ask uh, uh, about number? What's the typical thing that they will say? You will say, how many? How many people? You will say, what is the, the more or less the value? Uh, are the small numbers, big numbers, medium sized numbers? What, what, what are the kind of numbers that we see here? And then you, you will have another question like, uh, are they uh, all the same value? Uh, are they very different? Are they homogeneous? Or, uh, I mean, like, do you see a lot of variability? Or are they, on the contrary, they, are they very similar to each other? These are the basic questions that we can ask to, to, to a set of numbers. There are much many, much many. But these are the very basic questions that you should be able to answer any any case. Uh, what is happening here? Okay. And notice that uh, even if you are not taking numbers, uh, if you are taking, I don't know, a, a cloth size, uh, small, medium, large, extra large, at least you should say how many of each one. Okay. The first question can be answered even if you don't have uh, numbers in any case. So that's the first thing that you do with your data. So, for example, uh, this is a very crowded uh, slide, but I think you will be able to, to follow it. For uh, data frames and tables, we have the question, how many people? And we have the, a function to answer that question is end row. End row tell you has time, how many people, OK? There is another function that sometimes, most of the time you want to use this one. Sometimes you want to use this because it's giving you, with one question, two answers. It's giving you a number of students, sorry, yeah, number of students, number of, number of rows, and number of columns. I'm missing my circuit here. Okay, I'm, let's see how, how far I can go with the, all the computer melting here. And uh, the main change, if you are working with a vector, uh, you have to use length. So n row doesn't work for vectors, and length doesn't work correctly for, for data frames or for tables. OK? So uh, essentially, we are working with two kinds of structures here, either vectors or tables. And they have different properties, and we can do different things on each case. So, um, so therefore, you have to be more or less careful uh, about what is what, and keep track of what are you saying, what are you looking. Okay. Any questions? Can I ask something? Yes, of course. Uh, we have seventeen an unavailable row, right? Ah, but I see, I see. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Yeah? Okay. 100. What is the question? Uh, we have 17 non-available row, right? Exactly, not available. Exactly, exactly. Exactly. That is what they are missing. Uh, your, your question is kind of why the length of weight is shorter than the uh, number of rows. Yeah, that is, I guess that is the question that you are asking indirectly. Uh, and you are guessing that that is because NA. Yeah, uh, well, technically, I didn't ask that question. So uh, I, I, I guess that is what you say. But I didn't test it yet. Uh, we can ask that question later. It's, it's, it's not a hard question. Uh, but yeah, I, I think you are right. I agree with you. But later, we should ask that question explicitly. Uh, you, you can ask that question exactly. How many NA values you have? That is a different question, okay? It's a good question. And in fact, it's the question that I was expecting that someone asked, so good point. Uh, then, this is one way of counting that you count in total, but there is another way of counting that you count each one of the cases. For example, we have two uh, variables that have two values. 
uh, if you write with the left hand or the right hand, or uh, your sex, your male or female. Okay, so the first uh, way of counting is counting total. Okay, that is one way of counting. How many? In total, and then I count how many of each one. In other words, when when you ask the question how many, there are two answers. I mean, the question how many is not a good question because it is not clear if you are asking how many in total or how many of each one. If I ask you how many boys and girls are in the class, what is the answer? Well, it depends on what. In total, we have 170. Of each one, we have 77 girls and 39 boys. You see the difference? Both are answered to the question, how many? So uh, what you have to be careful is that the, you have to ask the question that you want to ask. Uh, you have to be, and if they, uh, someone asks you the question, how many, you, you should say, how many in total? or how many of each one? Because both questions are valid, both questions are good, but they are different, okay? It's not that one is better than the other, it's just that they are different questions. What else? Um, we can also, and, and this is when things start to be interesting, you can uh, ask for combination. Here, I am using the same common table, but I put two variables, the handness, left and right, and the sex, male or female, okay? Separated with comma. And now you understand what the common table is called table, uh, because it gives you a table that essentially say there are nine girls that uh, write with the left hand, three boys that write with the left hand, and 68 girls writing, uh, writing with the, uh, the right hand, uh, you see? And uh, please take, take care that this table is new. This is something that you have not seen before. It is not here. Uh, from, from this data, from, 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 from each one separated, you cannot find this table. This table is telling you more stories than the previous one. Can you see it, no? So, and I, 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 I know that this sounds weird, but this is a story. This is a, a, a narrative that we can say. Okay, we can say in our group, we have 170 people and of these people, only three are male and left-handed. You didn't know that before. So for example, one question will be if the, if the proportion, there, there are, more uh, left-handed female than male. Uh, so you can ask, maybe women tend to be more left-handed than men. Uh, there is kind of uh, a bias there. But then you have the point that there are also more females than male in general, because in this course, we have more girls than boys in general. So. We have twice, and kind of two times more girls than boys. And there are three times more uh, female left-handed than male. So yeah, interesting. They seem to be more. Uh, the answer is not, it's not so straightforward, huh? but, but it's the kind of question that you would like to ask. You would like to see, is this unexpected or not? Uh, is it that, the girls tend to be more left-handed than boys. This is a very simple case, but you will say later, like, are people uh, drinking Coca-Cola more, uh, uh, getting more diabetes, for example? Are people smoking getting more cancer, for example? That will be the kind of question. Are, uh, are, are uh, 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 cells exposed to this antibiotic growing faster or dying? I mean, are they surviving or dying? Mm -hmm. Or even more, 
would the, the, the more important question today is like instead of male female you can say for example did you take a vaccine for covid or not and in the other you will say did you got covid or not you will you what you will like it that people who get the vaccine doesn't get covid all these questions are answered starting with a table like this okay so this table is is important it, uh, it's in fact it's called a contingency table like how, how they combine uh, and it, it, the first step in many other questions you, you need a little more uh, probability background to, to to evaluate if this is meaningful or not i mean with the small numbers you cannot make very strong conclusion but if if you have a lot of data if you have a lot of people if your sample size is big you can start telling uh, more robust things but if you if you read the news all this news about covid vaccines what they have is a table like this uh, they give vaccine to some people and other people they get a placebo and they observe them and see how many got covid and how many did not got covid and they found that it's not 100 percent but it is much better okay okay so a uh, table is probably the best tool that we have with this kind of data that is a uh, text let's say that is not numbers okay because uh, you you can count them maybe you can ask other questions but the basic question that you will ask always ask if you have text values is how many then we have uh, the problem that if we have numbers then it is not so good uh, because uh, numbers can take many many values in, in, in different ways so we have for example one people with 42.5 six people with 47 one people with 106 i don't know eight people with 65 and eight people with 55 so in this case when you have numbers table is not so good uh, it is good with text but it's not good with numbers uh, it's not uh, because i mean a summary kind of by definition should be smaller than the complete story mm -hmm. if my summary is telling you everything they are not making a summary no like uh, if i give you a book to read and i say give me a summary and you tell me the, all the book you are not making a summary no so we have to choose less numbers you have we have to choose something more carefully so what is the, the the thing that we do with numbers well you may know this the first question is answer a question about location where are the values uh, where in the uh, real number line where are they located are they very high very low and there are several tools that we use too the first and basic that you will find is minimum and maximum no? that's kind of the first thing that you can so and and you can uh, probably uh, kind of looking at the numbers i mean okay let's see let's see Just a good good question let's go back one minute uh, here we have 100 numbers if i ask you what is the smallest and what is the biggest you may be able to find them just looking at the screen no you you you, you look and you, you you may be able but, but you have to be careful because it, it's easy to, to forget i mean i see this 105 and then i may not see the 106 or or uh, it's easy to get confused but let's see that you can do but if you have much more data if you have 1000 numbers or 100000 numbers Will you do it by hand? Well, probably not. So um, when we did the uh, table here, at least this command is giving the data from smallest to biggest. So at least you can find what is the smallest and the biggest. But in general, what you want to do is to use the tools that you have in your computer. There is a command called min and a command called max, OK? So don't forget that you can always say what is the minimum, what is the maximum, and that is easy. Okay. 
So, in fact, uh, if you see the computer part here is easy. Uh, you, you have number of rows, how many of each one, what is the smallest, what is the biggest. And the, the commands are very easy to, to remember. Uh, table, max, min, uh, and row, length. You, you, the, the commands are not the problem. The problem is which command you should use in every case, uh, how you think about it. OK, so minimum and maximum. So sometimes, not very often, but sometimes you may want to use uh, another command called range. Range will give you small and biggest in one command. OK? And um, this is the same logic, the same way of thinking that the dim command that give you number of rows and number of columns in one step, range give you minimum and maximum in one step. Okay, we don't use it very much, but sometimes we use it. Uh, it's just a short. Uh, I mean, if you don't have range, you can always ask minimum and maximum. If you don't have dimension, you can always ask number of row, number of column. If you have to learn only one thing, learn minimum, maximum, number of row, number of column. If you have more memory and you want to have a, more tools in your tool set, you can remember range and dimension. Okay. Uh, average. That is what people will normally. Uh, Call the location of numbers. Okay. So the idea of average is to have a number that will represent everybody. Uh, for example, people say the average person. Uh, the average person in Turkey eats 1.5 kilos of bread every day. I don't know. I am inventing. No? But this is the kind of thing. The average salary, the average weight, uh, uh, the average income, the average student of Istanbul University take 10 courses every semester. I don't know. Isn't so? People say that the average case. In the economy, is super important. What is the average income? Uh, and in, in general, in, in, in science, and in particular in biology, average is kind of the first thing that you do. Because if you have 100 or 100,000 values, you don't want to see all of them. You want to see one and to have an idea what are we talking. Okay. And the point that I want to make here is that when we say average, there are many ways to answer the question of average. There, there is not one thing called the average. There is one that you have in your mind probably, but it's not the only average. Okay? The question that you want to answer is what is the best number to represent as a vector? A, a set of numbers. The average that you probably have in your mind is the arithmetic mean. That is what we people, in Excel, this is called average. But in R, it's called mean because it's a, a more correct way. There are more than one way to do average. So uh, if you have a vector, and I'm writing here in mathematic notation, V sub 1 to V sub n, that's the numbers in the vector, then the mean of the vector is the length of, the, I mean, is the sum of all the elements divided by the length of the vector. Okay? This is the mean of V. Okay, that is the number that you do when you take your, uh, what is your average grade, uh, how many, what is your score in the exam? That is how we will take the mean. Is it? So just remember that when most of the time, when we say average, we mean mean. Right? And there is a joke that say, on average, average means means. Right? Uh, so just remember, but we will see at least one more. There are other average that sometimes you find in, in molecular biology, uh, I mean, of each one of these, there is one application that you use this average. Uh, sometimes you use something called geometrical mean. Sometimes you use something called harmonic mean. Some use quadratic mean. 
they're kind of very specific for, I mean, essentially the, the question, remember that average is trying to find the best value. And the definition of best depends on context. Okay, so the arithmetic mean is use is useful in many contexts. Uh, one day we can tell you, if we have more time, we can tell why arithmetic means is something that people use a lot and in which context it makes sense. But in different contexts, you may need to use some other kind of mean, geometrical, harmonic, quadratic, cubic, and so on. And by the way, when people say arithmetic and geometric, it means that they are thinking like uh, very old people. These are names that uh, at least 500, maybe 2,000 years old of this, these names. Right? The difference between arithmetic and geometric is kind of something very Babylonic, let's say. Uh, Bab in Babylonia, they have this difference between arithmetic and, and, and geometric. But today, we, we, we think that they're the same thing, right? just two faces of the same coin. What is the other average that we use a lot? The other average that we use a lot is called the median. Okay? You probably know it, but this is super important. This is uh, half of the class of today is this. If X is the median of a vector, then it means that half of the value in that vector are smaller than X and half of the value are bigger than X. It's kind of the number that is in the middle. Uh, if you sort them, from smallest to biggest, the average, sorry, the median is in the middle. That is the name median. Median means in the middle. And that is what we, uh, what we mean when we say the average person. Uh, for example, I mean, an average person, if you take, you cannot take arithmetic mean of boy and girl. How you do that? Will be not boy, not girl. So, so when you say average, it's kind of if you sort them from some some order, I mean weight, for example, or income, or something like that. Then you get the more poor in one side, the more rich in the other side, and the one in the middle that will be the median and will be the average. And in fact, this that seems a joke is true. If you ask people, do you think that you are you are uh, smarter than the average person? Most people think that they are smarter than the average person, and that depending on how you think it's average, kind of cannot be. And there is a point, like. I think in England they say that, or, I, or in US, I don't remember, they say that they wanted to increase the, the score. I, we are going to improve education so our students will all be over average. They promise that all the students will get grades over the average of the grades, which of course cannot be done. But that kind of thing happened. That when you don't know what is an average, people say we are going to be all over the average. That cannot be. Keep in mind this, median and mean are usually different. There are very few cases, very few cases in which these two numbers are the same. Fortunately, that, that okay, you have to see, you have to see, you, you have to always get both because if they are the same, it's kind of good that they, they get the same number, but typically they are different and there is a reason why, and I'm going to explain in a minute. In our case, uh, you you get uh, these numbers. This is the mean of the value that we have, and this is the median. Uh, and you see they are similar, but not exactly the same. So why why we care about this? The the main reason is that uh, the technical name is that median is robust. Robust means that the value doesn't change if you shake it a little bit, uh, if kind of, I don't know, 
for example, if I take this glass and if I shake it, I will break it. Uh, but if I take something more, more, uh, more solid, more robust, like I don't know, this book, uh, if I shake it, it will, I will not break it so easily. So the, the idea is that the median doesn't break so easily like uh, the mean. For example, imagine that one day an elephant comes to our class and I ask it this question. What is the weight of an elephant? What do you think is the weight of an elephant? Guess something. Okay, one at a time. Booster, say something. Um, maybe a few tons. A few tons, yeah. Can? Yeah. One ton. One ton? Yeah, maybe. Okay, uh, I, 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 I had the same idea. Uh, I also think that was something. But to be honest, you know, uh, sometimes a cow can be uh, 8,800 ki kilos. So a cow or, or sometimes even some horses can be like, like an elephant are much bigger. So what I did, I Googled uh, and I got this thing. And uh, if I, I hope you can see this. I found that there are different size of elephant. Uh, there are 2.7 tons for the African forest elephant, the Asian elephant, 4,000, and the African bush elephant, 6,000. I, I will agree if you say that uh, finding the first answer in Google is probably not correct. Uh, it's not a scientific, very, very strong. But for today's class will be good enough for us. OK? I mean. 6,000 seems, uh, that is, by the way, six ton, uh, seems a reasonable number, okay? Given that this, <clears throat> I mean, uh, a human, let's say approximately, a human is uh, 100 kilo, let's say. So 10, 12 humans are one ton. And they, you can see 10 people, how much, if you pack them together, is more like a cow, a big cow. A cow is typically, I don't know, I will say 600 to 800 kilos. And an elephant is much bigger than that. So you have kind of several cows at the same time. And they have a lot of bones and bones are more heavy. So uh, 4,000 uh, up to say, but I will choose 6,000 just for the sake of the story that I'm telling you, okay? By the way, why I'm asking this? Because it is important in general that you have an idea of what are the order of magnitude we are speaking. Uh, if someone tells you that an elephant is 300 kilos, you should say, hmm, it doesn't make sense. Or if they say 300 tons, you also say it doesn't make sense. You, you, it is super important that you get the habit of uh, thinking or evaluating or estimating what is the size of something? What is the weight of something? If, if things make sense or not. Okay. So we have the average weight. And let's say that one day we have an elephant student and we have one extra 6,000. 6, what happened with the average? Well, what I did here is you see, I, I concatenate the vector weight with one extra number. That is how I put an extra number. So this is our course, our group plus one elephant. Okay. What happened with the mean, the arithmetic mean, it increases almost twice. One element, uh, one new people in the group and the mean changed a lot. What to happen with the median? Tell me what happened with the median when we put one extra. Same. The same. Yeah. The same. So it doesn't change. So that is what we mean is robust. With, the, with this elephant in this case is an outlier, clearly, because most of the people, I mean, all the people except the elephant, have weights that are much smaller. The elephant is very much an outlier. And 
if we take the arithmetic mean, the uh, outlier is affecting it. But if instead we take the median, it doesn't change. It's much more robust. Um, there is a typical uh, example of this is when you think, in, instead of thinking of um, weight, you think about money, the income, how much money you have. And uh, we probably have some variability, but we are more or less in a, in a well-defined range. And we have an average of us. If one day, one day Bill Gates came to the group, uh, he has much money that I don't know, everybody in the world, something like that. So, uh, so the average income increased a lot. So, but the, the, but the median does not. So for example, in, 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 in economy, there's always the problem that uh, how you take the average, the, the conclusion when you say, for example, uh, I don't know, in California, the average income is very high, but yeah, because you have a few rich people. Uh, in London, uh, there are uh, 100 people with trillions of dollars. Uh, so the average is super high, but a lot of people have a very low income. So to understand what is happening, the mean is not very good uh, because outliers have a big impact. Median, on the other side, is much better representing what is happening with the typical person. Most of us are close to 65 than to 125. Okay? Most of us will, be, will feel more well represented by 65 kilos than with 125 kilos. So why we use mean? Well, there are uh, probably, let's say, technical reasons. The first technical reason is that uh, to calculate a median, you need to sort everything from beginning, from smallest to biggest, and take the middle. And sorting numbers is very hard if you don't have a computer. On the other side, to take the uh, arithmetic mean, you just need to add all of them and count all of them. And that is something that you can do with pen and paper. Uh, even if they are big numbers, you just go adding one by one. You, go by, you don't need to see the big picture. You need to see only the total and, and add a new value to the total, okay? So people learn to do arithmetic mean in, I don't know, 500 years ago, 1,000 years ago. People can do that from, for a long time. Uh, you don't need computer, but to calculate median, you need a computer. So now that we have a computer, people are doing more and more statistics based on median, because now, now it's possible. So essentially, there was a technological change that allowed us to do that. Uh, what we use, well, depends on the tools that we can use later. In general, we want to see both of them. For example, if we have, uh, there is a, the comment that we, we, we are going to see. This is the comment that I wanted to introduce you today. The comment is called summary, that in this case, I am applying to a vector. We can also apply to, to a data frame or a table, but let's start with this because let's understand this first. What are these values? Uh, you, you take a vector, you apply the function summary, and you get this value. Can you tell me what are these uh, numbers? What, the, what, do, what, did, what are they representing? We have six numbers. Tell me something about some of them. Um. Minimum value is 42.50. Uh, okay. And Min uh, median. What is the meaning? Minimum is the smallest one. Yeah, smallest one. Uh, yeah. Median value is 65, but first quarter is between, uh, first quarter value is between uh, smallest and median value. Okay. Okay. It's um, um, smallest and medians uh, average first quarter is. 
Ah, interesting, interesting. Do you agree with that? The rest of the people? Um, can you say it again? Uh, first quarter value is um, minimum values and median. Uh, sorry, first quarter value is between minimum value and uh, medium value. Uh, I can say um, minimum values and ma median values average is first quarter values. Yeah, so uh, in other words, you are essentially saying that this number is, is kind of in the middle between minimum and median. Or mm -hmm. Okay, so a good guess. Um, but in fact, it's the question because because I, I expect that everybody should recognize what is mean, mean, minimum, smallest value, max, largest value, greatest value, mean, what people call average, arithmetic mean, median, the other average that we discussed. But the question is, what is this first? Q and third Q. And you say quart and it's kind of close. So, but let's let's make definition. The name is quartile, uh, quartile if you like, quartile probably in English. And, and you are right that come from quart. Uh, quart is the Latin for one, one fourth, one quart. No? Uh, when you divide by four, each part is called one quarter. For example, the time you say, ah, oh, it is, uh, let's say, I don't know, one minus quarter, uh, one plus quarter. Uh, a quarter of hour is one fourth of an hour. So, but what they mean exactly? The idea that you, again, sort from minimum and maximum, and you know that, for example, the median is 50% uh, uh, of the values are smaller than the median, 50% and higher. The Q1 is 25%, one quarter of the values are less than Q1, and three quarters are bigger. So, uh, more, more, more clear, let me show you here. The first quartile means that zero elements are smaller than this one. There are nobody smaller than Q0. Q1, one quarter, 25% of the elements are smaller or equal than this value. Q2, two quarters, half of the elements are smaller than this value. Three quarters and four quarters. Okay? Yes, no? Maybe? Yes. And if you think about this, it's easy to see that the first, the, the Q0 is the minimum. The smallest value, one way to say that the value is the smallest is that there is nobody smaller than the minimum. Okay? That's a way to say that there's nobody smaller than the minimum. That is what makes the minimum. There's nobody smaller than it. Then you have the other extreme, Q4, all elements are smaller than Q4. That is the maximum. Definition of maximum that is bigger than everybody. Nobody is bigger than it, it is bigger than everybody. Q2, we already spoke about it, is half of the elements are smaller, half of the elements are bigger, therefore Q2 is the median. Okay? And what you are getting. So, Zeynep is right that Q1 is always between Q0 and Q2, but it's not necessarily in the middle. It depends on how the numbers are organized. They can be packed in different orders and, and the Q1 will move, depending on how, how they organize. So, so, these numbers, these five numbers, give you an idea of what is the minimum, what is the maximum, what is in the middle, and how or more or less they move, uh, how more or less they are grouped. Are they all grouped in, the, in one side? 
are the group in the because for example you can have the average with numbers that are uh, very big and very small or you can have the same average with all numbers in the middle okay let's let's just say that just to put numbers you have like i don't know 50 kilos 50 kilos 50 kilos 100 kilos 100 kilos 100 kilos yeah. and the average will be something in between you can have okay let's 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 see 50 kilos 50 kilos 65 kilos uh, 90 kilos 90 kilos 90 kilos uh, if you have something like that then the median will be 65 but they are very different no? if on the other side you have like uh, 50 kilos 65 65 65 65 90 kilos then the average and the median will always be the same I will write you this number later, but I am trying to tell you that you can have the same minimum, the same maximum, the same median, the same average with, with a set of numbers that are very different. And you will see that difference with the first quartile and third quartile. Okay? So this is kind of the advanced answer that you can give to the question is what is happening with these numbers okay let's make it even more sometimes people ask uh, even more like what is the value that have some percentage like 10 percent or, or 90 percent or one percent of the uh, essentially here here we took uh, quarters one quarter, two quarters, three quarters, four quarters. So we are moving in block of quarter, or moving in block of 25%. What if we, instead of 25%, I want to move by 10% or by 1% or something like that? Well, then the, that is not a problem. You have a, a, the name for that is quantile. Instead of quartile for quarter, you have quantile. How many? Quantum. Okay. Or sometimes called percentile. Uh, if you read the literature, you will find a percentile, especially in economy. Uh, people in economy speak of, about people in the uh, highest percentile uh, and the lower percentile or something like that. In, in also in education, you, you see the grades the students in the higher percentile. For example, when you apply for a PhD or for a master, the typical question that they ask is, what is your percentile? The, the question is not if you got good grades or bad grades. It's like, do you get good grades when everybody got bad grades? Or did you get good grades when everybody got good grades? If I give you, let's say, 100% to everybody in the exam, if everybody got the same grade, then you cannot know who is better. Or if if everybody if everybody got but maybe maybe I am very harsh, and uh, the scores in the exam are very bad, but some of you are going to be better. So more than what is your grade, the real question is how are you located in your group? Are you one of the good students or one of the bad students? That is the question that people ask, and the question is asking in this way: what is your percentile? How we do this in R? The function, and, and here you have to pay attention because they, unfortunately, the language is not very clear. The function is called quantile. But if we don't say anything, it will give you quartile. So it is confusing because the names are very similar and the meaning is very similar but they are not exactly the same so you have to be careful the, the common is quantile and it gives you quart quartiles but uh, for example here uh, you you may recognize the number here I, I ask what are the quantiles of our vector and this is the minimum and this is the first quantile the second which is the mean the third and the fourth you might recognize this from the summary function yes no Yes. Uh, 
Okay, good. People speak. Um, then what else? Ah, this one. Next one. Uh, why is called quantile if you're going to be quartile? Well, because you have the option of uh, telling what are the uh, percentage that you want. For example, here I want uh, at 10%, uh, 20%. So essentially I say from zero to 100% to, to one, in, increasing by 10%, uh, 0.1. 0.1 is 10%, no? So this sequence command, this sec command, is uh, giving 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, so until 100%. And then I took this, be, be careful, this sequence is giving you the top part, okay? Then we put the vector weight and we calculate the quantile, the 10% quantile. So for example, we know that the smallest value is again, 42.5. There is nobody less than 42.5. 10% of people are less or equal than 51.8. 20% of people are less than 55. 25% is less than 26. 30% less than 38. And in the other side, for example, 90% of people are less or equal than 82 kilos, 0.3 kilos. Okay? People look like... Okay, I'm looking at Zeynep Gungar. Maybe she looks like this, like, not, not moving the face, right? Okay. Okay, see this. Good. I, I just want to know that you are real people and not just a recording. You know that the people do that and they put a recording and they... Uh, anyway. Uh, so, in summary, this is what the summary command gives, okay? And this is probably the first thing that we should do. So, uh, now it should be clear. This, this means that 25% of people. So this number is not always exactly the same. Let's, let's try this class. Let's go to R and let's just make a couple of uh, examples here. Let's make this bigger. Maybe a little more. So I was saying, just to play with the, some set of data, let's say that the vector V, I'm making a vector here, or let's tell V1, um, because I may need two, two versions of that. And I was saying, let's say that you have 50, 50, 50 kilos, then um, uh, 65, and then uh, 80, no? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see if I am guessing it. So, what is the mean? The mean of v1, 65, arithmetic mean. No? The median. It is 65 because I sorted them. And uh, what are the uh, summary? I should probably ask summary. So, uh, since they are all grouped in, in one extreme. You can see that they are uh, 50, 50, 50, that the 25% the, the quartile is, uh, the first quartile is also 50. Now, let me try the other case that I was saying. What happened if I have uh, uh, V2, another vector, it will be similar, and I will put 50, 65, 65, 65, um, another one, another one. I want to have the same link. One, two, 
3, 4, 5, 6, and only 7. And the last is 8. Let's add the summary of this new vector. The minimum is the same. The median is the same. The median is the same. The maximum is the same. Can you see, no? You look like it. I see nothing. I make it bigger letter. No, too much. So you see that minimum and maximum are, are, are a first, they are important and you have to know it, but they are not telling all the story. Then you have median and mean that tell you another part of the story beyond the minimum and maximum. Okay, but they, again, they are not telling all the story. When you get to the quartiles, you get, uh, of course, this is a summary. You are losing some information. Uh, this is not all the thing that we have to say, but it is a part of the story. Okay, so um, and the difference is here. When you see that the first quartile and the third quartile are very close to the median, it means that the values are all grouped around the central value. Uh, they are kind of all together. If, on the other side, the first quartile is more closer to the minimum and the third quartile is closer to the maximum, it means that you have uh, what we call a bimodal thing. Uh, you have uh, some of them are uh, short, some of them are high. Okay. Come on. What else? Um, so let's see with our data. Let's see with our data. You still have at hand your thing. Um, well, we are, we are going to, to do uh, the, um, the exercise, but we can start with the second part. Uh, as I, want, I want to have a lunch break like a quarter to one. It's fine? Fine. Good, good. I'm hungry, but we let finish it. Um, so let's uh, go to the thing. Last class we were working, and I have still here the last week. Uh, I, I want to keep with working with that data, but not with the tool that we have now. Uh, I am switching to the project that we make last week. You probably have it or. Uh, I, I think I sent uh, in the web of the, I mean, I see in the Google group the, the, the link to the to this file. And we, we had a problem with the NA. Okay, let's do this. Let's see what happened with summary when we have NA. Okay, that is a good question. So I am starting here. Uh, where I am looking here. Let's see if in the files I should see. Okay, this is the file the RMB file here, and these are the uh, data, okay? So uh, I am starting by reading the data here, plug. And we get the, okay? This is all the data, the same that we were working last time. And uh, the basic question, number of column, number of row, that is the one that we want to, let's, let's do something, let's clear, let's just to be clear, we will go here and clear all output. So we, what we see here is up to date. Okay. Um, okay, let me, please, I need to stop my screen for one, not my screen, my, my camera. So what were we saying? Um, 
number of number of rows number of 217 and then we did something with the weight uh, seeing the mean and we had the problem that the mean has na so what what was the solution i uh, remember we asked this question is there is any na and one solution was to take here this one this is what we are we're doing now so what i'm going to do at the end of the last class i'm going to copy this and i'm going to um, we're going to work with this auto range later okay um, okay maybe okay let's let's do it here before going to wait i'm going to see here I'm going to add a plus place here. So um, uh, using only, a, a, no, summary, summary. Let's see the summary of this thing. So um, yeah, yeah, we have the data here. So uh, we say, yeah, that is what I want to, I, I remember now, okay, R, we want to say summary of student weight. Just, just to remind you, what is happening here is this, just to remind you from last class. And let me go back a second and, and let's remember. We uh, load the data. Did we load? Yeah, here, students. And we found that some of the, and, and we calculate the average and the average was NA. And it was NA essentially because when we see the value that we get from the survey, some of the people didn't answer that question. They were shy. And uh, we had a different strategy. One was trying to get, uh, uh, see only the value that are uh, valid and then we calculated the mean uh, here like this we we drop the values that are not uh, uh, na i mean we drop the na we keep the values that are not na and we ha also have this option mean with na remove is true uh, so essentially we have two uh, answer to the mean one is with an a that essentially means that we don't know because we don't have all the data there are some missing data and there's other answer that uh, the answer only for the part that we know and in this case i want to see what happened with somebody when we have an a and what what happened is something nice can you see and this is the answer to the same question. The, when we do summary and there is NA, then there is another column saying how many NA values we have. Okay, you see? How many? You were saying, do we have 17 people that are NA? And the answer is yes, 17 values were NA. But all the rest of the values are calculated using only valid numbers. So uh, mean, let's, let's, let's take a minute to, to compare this with the, uh, with the long result. Let's say that I don't want to use summary and I want to do it manually. Let's say. So if I take mean, I'm going to calculate this a little. Min, max, and uh, median of student weight. And let's see what happened. NA, NA, NA. Why? Because we have part of the values that are not available. And if some of the data is not available, you cannot make an answer that is completely uh, full. So we have to add the option in A 
remove with essentially means for this computing, ignore the uh, NA values uh, true. And we calculate again and we get the number 42,100. So you see, if you want to do by hand, it's kind of a lot of work. So if uh, using summary is helping you to do it uh, much clearly, much directly. So now summary is a function that helps you to understand. Uh, you probably uh, will not print directly in the paper. Uh, this is not something that we put in the paper, but it helps you to understand the numbers and, and helps you to choose what to show. There is one question that is still missing here is what if we apply summary to the complete table? Not to the vector like we did now. Uh, all this, you see, there is a dollar sign here. Therefore, we are working with a vector, with a single column. So what if instead of a single column, we apply to all the table? What we will get is an uh, answer for each column, minimum, Quartile, median, quartile, maximum. Let, let's remember what is here. Let's remember. So we have date. We have a, a, an ID, a Kimblick. Uh, answer in text. Uh, sex in text. Birth date. So some are text, some are numbers. When you, uh, when you use the command, summary the text is not telling you anything useful you see it's just saying how many you have and you only know that they are character the date is more useful and the numbers in particular here height You see what is the minimum height, the median, the maximum, and how many people didn't answer? How many people didn't answer? There are also some NAs here, but somehow, uh, ah, here, for example, birth date. This is super interesting. And I want uh, you, you to think why it can be. Two people didn't answer the birth date. Uh, they are shy, they don't want to show. Certain people didn't answer the height, they are shy. 17 people didn't answer the weight. Kind of, people are more shy about the weight than about the age. What do you think? So in, in summary, summary shows a uh, uh, good uh, summary, a uh, good uh, show this statistic, but only for numeric value. For text, it's not good. Okay. For text, what can we do? We say at the beginning, use table. So let's take a look. For example, we say, well, we did the, the, some of this thing. Table of um, um, I want to see one here. Uh, uh, English level. I want to see English level. That uh, we have not seen this one. You remember the question, English level? If you if you are uh, happy or not happy. There are four people that say that English, they are native English speaker, like they were born in UK or in, uh, and the first language is English. I, I, I envy them, I want to speak better English. I can read and understand technical papers. And that is something that I, I think all of you should be doing. Uh, if, if you are uh, going to be molecular biologist, you should be able to read 
paper, technical papers in English. Okay. Uh, speak fluently, yeah, it is good, not essential. Understand movies without subtitles. And that is super interesting because um, uh, and there is someone that said that can write poetry better than Shakespeare. I want to know what is the question and we're going to make an exam of uh, write poetry, otherwise it's dishonest. And that is uh, worrying me that uh, 12 people don't uh, know English and they are taking this course that is in English. So uh, part of the goal of this course is that you get familiar to read, write and discuss in English. One of the reasons why we do this thing in English. I mean, otherwise, why the university will hire foreigners? There are many good Turks that know the same thing that I know or Terje, or whatever. Uh, and, uh, they even, there are many people that work in, in England or the US, they have very good English, but if they are hiring foreigners, it's because they want you to learn English from foreigners. Right? Well, there are many other things, but but uh, there is a reason why having foreigners is, is a, a valuable thing. So, here we get something uh, that is telling us something. I mean, just counting how many of each one is, is a good, it's a good summary in this case. Let me show you a, a case that is not so good, similar to this one. So I'm going here. Uh, Beard. Place. So you, I would like to know, for example, how many of you have been born in Istanbul? And what happened here? What happened here? What can you tell me that is happening here? It's yeah. what is happening here? Yeah, I was hearing you better before you put the <laughs> anyway. It shows each uh, answer, but also how many are there. But actually, uh, most of them are the same answer, but uh, it counts as different answers because of the letters are different. Exactly. 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 This. Same answer is not the same. Let me put it on camera. Here I need to move my hands like this. The same answer is not the same because they are written in different ways. So exactly, you have Istanbul here uh, with one I, with another I, and with another I. Then you have Istanbul, Turkey with comma, small uh, letters, big letters, in Turkish, with a space, without a space. And that is not useful. Why is not useful? Because, well, essentially what you say, it's not easy to, to, to control. So how can we solve this? Well, the, the point is, I, I, I kind of did this intentionally because I wanted to show this, this case, but uh, the way that we solve this in general is using what we call a controlled vocabulary, meaning that you cannot use all words, you can only use a limited set of words. Uh, you, you kind of limit the, the alternative, so you can guarantee that you are going to see uh, something coded. For example, I think we did this today, maybe, uh, did we? 
und du das bist. And let's get out of here. Uh, in the quiz today, you um, recognize uh, probably, let's see here in the question. Um, For example, he, here in this question, you have to write. You have freedom to write, and when you write, each answer is different, okay? In, in this question, no, not this one. Uh, yeah, this question. You recognize that, I asked this question before. Do you recognize this? Did you recognize that uh, like uh, one or two weeks ago, I asked the same question? Yes. So what I did, I took your answers and I put them as alternatives. So somebody give these answers, somebody give these answers. So I didn't invent this, you invented them. But in this case, you can only choose one of these. This is what we call a controlled vocabulary. And this is, uh, what what guarantee that uh, we can compare the answers easily i mean you can always do it but but uh, it is much easier in this case because uh, we use the control of the vocabulary so what i want to do after our break is this let's go back to r i want to clean up this data probably we'll need to do it uh, a little work here um, but I essentially want to do this uh, kind of a, a set of rules that say, if the name is Istanbul, then write, well, we, we choose one of these. What is the more, more standard way? Probably, um, let's say this one, this, this one, let's say this one. So if it say, Istanbul with the small letters, we put Istanbul like this. And essentially kind of making a, a quick, um, a quick uh, tour. In fact, if you, if you want, we can even make a simplification. If it's a city in Turkey, we just put the city. And um, no, no, let's, let's, no, 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 let's make, let's make like this, uh, Aleppo, Syria, uh, uh, and uh, well, they say Azerbaijan here, we don't know the city. Um, so we will make a little uh, tied up so we can we can make a, a, a more uh, correct analysis. You see that, for example, here, these three mean the same thing, but we have to, we have to be coherent. That is the point. We have to be coherent. And, and the, the lesson is this. The best way to guarantee that you are going to be coherent is to prepare the question in a correct way. Uh, I mean, I don't know if you do, but if, if you ever uh, uh, fill an online survey or, or uh, uh, I don't know. For example, I, 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 I usually register to webinars. Uh, they are kind of uh, online webinar organized by, I don't know, the European Bioinformatics Institute, something like that. So when I fill that, they ask the country, but the country is a list of allowed values. Uh, when you fill in the internet, in the web, you have a list. You have to choose your country in a list of countries. Okay? Uh, that is the first idea. They try to guarantee that the uh, answer will be good. We didn't do this here, so we have to do something, uh, plan B. Our plan B will be like, since we don't know, uh, we, we, since we get it a kind of a messy data, uh, not very clear, we are have to clean it manually. But we are going to do it in a way that we can redo it every time. So we are going to write the steps that we need to do to clean up our data. 